If you've gone to create a new Blink Canvas app recently, you might have noticed this newer option available. Power Apps developers have always been able to choose between a phone format and a tablet format for their Canvas apps. But now we have this responsive style and it's not a new concept. Developers have always created apps that responded to screen size, but they had to build it from the ground up themselves. Now Microsoft has given us this responsive style, which has some of that built into it if you use the screen templates, which is what I recommend to do first. Start with using one of these pre-built screen templates because it's gonna have a lot of controls that are already included to help your app scale. I'm Helen Devlin, a Power Platform Trainer here at Pragmatic Works. And in this video, we're going to discuss some quick tips and tricks to get you started. I'm gonna start with a new screen. And I'm gonna choose one of these formats that is going to allow everything to scale properly. That doesn't mean every single control on your screen is gonna scale properly. This is where we need to get into some specifics to get everything to work the way it should. So I'm gonna start with a header and footer. This is gonna have my whole screen inside of a container. And then inside of that screen container, I have a header container, a main container, and a footer container. These are going to be vertical and horizontal containers, and these are really your best friend when you're trying to get things to scale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this gallery in my main container. And to add it to your main container, you can of course use your insert button on the ribbon or this plus. I'm gonna go ahead and look for a gallery. But which kind of gallery is gonna be best for what I'm doing? I have a horizontal gallery, a flexible height gallery, or a vertical gallery. Well, if you guessed flexible height gallery, then you guessed correctly. But should I go blank or with a layout? Well, since I wanna get everything to scale properly, I think it would be easiest for me to start with a blank flexible height gallery. That way I can choose everything and how everything's gonna interact from the beginning. You're gonna go ahead and choose whatever data you are using for your gallery. Then we're gonna get started in our template cell. In our template cell, we want to insert a container. This is really going to help everything scale properly. But like I said, vertical and horizontal containers are going to be your best friends in creating these responsive apps. So a vertical container is going to have all of your stuff showing in a top-down fashion. A horizontal container is gonna put everything side by side. Well, we want everything top-down, so we're gonna go vertical. And now you can just go ahead and drag your container where you want it inside your template cell. But what is super important is we are going to tie the width of our container to our gallery. But not just the width, the template width. So now when our gallery, which is a flexible height gallery, which is inside of a container, scales to screen size, this container will go with it. Now the next thing we need to do this is completely up to you, is I'm gonna turn off the drop shadow on this container. That's just a personal preference. But I'm also going to add some text. And I'm gonna point this text to something in my data set. And what I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to turn on auto height. And I'm also going to have it stretch. So that way it is going to stretch to the size of the container. Now it's pretty small in there, so I'm also gonna turn up the font size to about like, let's go 36. All right, so now you'll see that when we are in this size, this text easily fits across the width of my screen. But what happens when I go ahead and try to view this on a phone? Well, in preview, I can see what that's gonna look like. And you'll see that, okay, that it did scale, but it has this scroll feature on. And if you like that, that's fine, leave it that way. But if you maybe want it to not scroll, maybe let's have the font size be conditional based on what size our screen is. So to do that on this text, I'm gonna change the property to font change the property to font size, which is simply called size. And right now it's font size 36, because that's what I set in my properties panel. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some conditional logic. And this conditional logic is going to be your other best friend for when you're creating responsive galleries. So I'm gonna say if app.width is less than app.height, so that's my logical test. If the width of the screen is smaller than the height of the screen, like it would be in a phone, then do 
what? Okay, so what do I want it? Let's go with a font size of maybe 12. I think that'll be fine for a phone. And then I still like the 36 is a bit aggressive. I'm gonna go just like May 24. All right, so right now it's in 24 because I am in a larger screen size, but let's go back to previewing on that phone. And so now you will see that looks so much better. I don't have that scrolling going on in my gallery anymore. So that looks pretty good in my opinion. Now, since we have all of that formatting already done on that text label, if I wanted to add more text labels to this vertical container, I can just simply copy and paste it. So that way I don't have to do all of those property changes again. So now I've got that in there. Let me go ahead and just point it to a different piece of data. All right, so now I've got that in here, but it's really, really close together. And so another thing you can do with your vertical container is on the container itself, you can add a gap between the controls you add in there. So I can add a gap of 10. And now I've got some separation between those two controls. Also, you'll see that my controls are really close to the edge there. I can also add in some padding as well. And that looks much better. So those are just some quick formatting tricks that you can do as well with the container in your gallery. So right now I've got a couple things that are scaling the way I want them to. And I've got that conditional logic in my back pocket for anything else I need to scale as well. Just remember if app.width is less than app.height, then you want your true and your false statement for you're gonna put that on pretty much the majority of the controls that you want to be responsive. If you're interested in learning more about creating Canvas apps as a whole, check out any of our amazing and more in-depth courses on our on-demand learning platform. We have courses for all levels of expertise when it comes to Canvas apps. So I hope you found these tips and tricks for getting your galleries to be responsive helpful. And I'm interested to know your opinion. How do you guys feel about having this option from the start. When you go to create your blank canvas app, you now have this option to make your apps responsive. People have always been doing this by kind of Frankensteining their apps together, but we now have this template that can help us get to a good starting point with our responsiveness. So how do you guys feel about that? Do you think it works well? Do you think there should be more built-in features so that way we don't have to apply that logic on all of our other controls? Let me know. Let's have a discussion down in the comments. Also, like I mentioned earlier, if there's anything else you want to see be responsive, responsive forms, a landing page, let me know. And that can maybe be my next video. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one.